Hello guys, welcome to the second section, Database Services. In this section, we will start with creating a database with automatic failover. After that, we will create a database read replica and one-time database backup. Then we move to migrating database. Lastly, we will be calculating DynamoDB performance. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with creating a database with automatic failover. In this video, we are going to create a MySQL RDS database instance configured in multi-AZ mode to facilitate automatic failover. The diagram depicts database with automatic failover. The default VPC will work fine for this example. Once you are comfortable with creating database, you may want to consider a VPC containing private subnets that you can use to segment your database away from the internet and other resources. We will need the ID of the VPC, the CIDR range of the VPC, and the IDs of at least two subnets in your VPC. These subnets need to be in different availability zones, for example, US East 1A and US East 1B. First, we will create a new cloud formation template. We are going to add a total of 12 parameters to it. The first three parameters will contain the values such as ID of VPC, CIDR range of VPC, and the IDs of at least two subnets. Now we are going to add the database credentials as parameters. This is good practice as it means we are not storing any credentials in our infrastructure source code. The password contains the no echo parameter set to true. This stops CloudFormation from outputting the password wherever the CloudFormation stack details are displayed. The next block of parameters pertains to cost and performance. They should be mostly self-explanatory. Refer to the AWS Documentation on Database Instance Types should you wish to change the instance class. We are supplying a default value of 10 GB for the storage size and choosing a magnetic volume for the storage type. GP2 offers better performance, but it costs a little more. We need to set some additional parameters for our database. These are the MySQL engine version and port. Refer to the AWS documentation for a list of all the available versions. We are setting a default value for this parameter as the latest version of MySQL at the time of writing. Finally, we are going to define some parameters relating to backup and availability. We want our database to run in multi-AZ mode. We set this to true by default. We also set a backup retention period of one day by default. You might want to choose a period larger than this. If you set this value to zero, backups will be disabled, but is not recommended. We are done with the parameters for our template. We can now go ahead and start defining our resources. First of all, we want a security group for our DB to reside in. It allows inbound access to the database port from the CIDR range we have defined. Next, we need to define a DB subnet group resource. This resource is used to declare which subnet our DB will reside in. We define two subnets for this resource so that the primary and standard servers will reside in separate availability zones. Finally, we define our RDS instance resource. We specify it as being a MySQL database, and the rest of the properties are made up of the parameters and resources. As you can see, lots of ref is required here. For good measure, we can add an output to this template that will return the host name for this RDS database. Now we save the file as creating a database with automatic failover.yml. We provision the database via the CloudFormation web console or use the CLI command. Before running the command, put your username here, then your password. After that, subnet ID 1 and subnet ID 2 here. Lastly, put your VPC ID. Now we will run the command. In a multi-AZ configuration, AWS will provision a standby MySQL instance in a separate availability zone. Changes to the database will be replicated to the standby database instance in a synchronous fashion. If there is a problem with your primary DB instance, AWS automatically fail over to the standby. Promote it to be the primary DB and provision a new standby. You don't have access to a query standby database directly, so you can't use it to handle all your read queries. For example, 
If you wish to use additional database instances to increase read capacity, you'll need to provision a read replica. Backups will always be taken from the standby instance, which means there is no interruption to database availability. This is not the case if you opted against deploying your DB in multi-AZ mode. When we deployed this example, it took roughly 20 minutes or more for the stack to report completion. This is because the RDS service needs to go through a process in order to provision a fully working multi-AZ database. The process is provision the primary database, backup the primary database, provision the standby database using the backup from the primary. Configure both databases for synchronous replication.